my dad should have been a comic. He has so many great stories, and he's such a funny guy. He's he's been arrested on suspicion of terrorism before. Oh, that's a great story. <laughs> um, How are you? We're coming to the end of this episode, and you drop gingerly that your dad was arrested on suspicion of terrorism. Yeah, yeah, yeah in Rome in the eighties. What is happening right now? thing of it is if we have kids their last name would be condom duck it which is just a middle school entryway into condom fuck it <laughs> i mean you're not wrong i am um, just devastating you also have to think about i mean okay so here's here's really the amazing thing if you have a daughter mm -hmm. and you name her amelia beth Mm -hmm. Her initials could be A B C D, and that's <laughs> and that is the greatest. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a good, that's a good thought. Yeah, yeah. you got. I mean, there's no better reason to name her that. Yeah. I don't know if you know, maybe Amelia is not yeah. a super hip name, but just for A yeah. B C D. Yeah, if it's a boy, Albert Byron. Yeah, of yeah. course, and that works. Yeah. To me, Albert and Byron sound like they work together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in. I'm in for it. Yeah, I I had never put that together. That's I, so funny. Listen, I want you to take it. Home, um, and tell everybody you know. Yeah, my and um, mine are just mine's MRD. So you know, just like no one called me Mr. D. M no one called me Mr. D. Oh, okay. Um, my, <laughs> as soon as I said it, you're like, no one did. That. <laughs> no one did that. You'd think, but no one did. Uh, my brother's is SMD. So people like that's that. sick. <laughs> oh, so they liked it. Yeah, everyone was like, that's so awesome. Your initials are SMD. Before we keep going, though, I do want to talk about the tea that we're drinking for everyone yes. listening at home because our people, our steeple, steep with us at home. Uh, this is another Paru tea. So Paru is from La Jolla. Shout out to everyone in La Jolla. Shout out Tim and Cindy. Yeah. The, oh, Tim and Cindy. That's um, uh, my girlfriend's parents. They, uh, let, Tim and Cindy, we love you. They here. just moved into a wonderful abode in La Jolla. It's oh. very nice. It's their dream home. Tim and Cindy, uh, you're welcome here anytime. <laughs> and you should also go to Paru Tea. This is Pomelo Wild. This is a green tea with pomelo flowers. It's fantastic. We brewed this at 175 for about... I, between two and three minutes don't do more than that it'll get pretty bitter um yeah no bitterness here this is a delight are you a big tea drinker um i'm always down for a tea i don't okay. drink as much as i would okay. like are you more of a coffee guy or are you one of those crazy unicorns that doesn't need caffeine i used to not need caffeine uh and then i turned 24 <laughs> And it just 24 like, was the breaking point. Yeah, I just like crashed because I was like in the workforce full time for the first time in my life. And yeah, I just like could not handle getting up at 630 going to work and that whole thing. So I started with like really sweet coffee. Um, OK, but you know, tea tea's always been in the household. Uh, my mom is like an adamant uh, black tea, Irish tea person. Um, black Irish tea, like builder's tea. Yeah, yeah. She'll like yell at me if there's not a box of Bailey's tea in my Interesting. Apartment. She'll I, like she, she'll like open the cupboards to like look to see if it's in there. You, that's so specific. Bailey's Bailey's black tea. Is your mother? Does she have Irish roots? So yeah, my great grandfather fled Ireland in the 1920s during the Civil War. Um, because he was cousins with Michael Collins, who was the leader of the Irish Revolution. What? Um, so my great-grandfather fought in the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, to liberate the country. Um, and for those who don't know, and I'm a history major, so I have to know these things beyond just my family history. Um, so basically what happened is in 1916, um, the Irish revolted against um, Great Britain to liberate the island. World War One conveniently happened at the same time. Classic. And so the yeah. British were like, we can't deal with you right now. We've got too much shit going on. So this is what we'll do. We'll cut a deal. We'll give you most of the island, but we're going to keep six counties uh, as part of um, as the United Kingdom. And so that's what created what is known as, uh, you know, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. So within the revolutionaries, there were two groups, one who wanted to take the deal and those who didn't. So Michael Collins took the deal, and that's what started the Irish Civil War, was the fracturing of the Irish Republican Army over this agreement. 
Um, so Michael Collins was assassinated in the Irish countryside and like basically uh, a reverse drive by where they were driving and there were people on the hills sh- and they shot down. They just shot him and killed him. Or we could actually um, argue that's the original drive by. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. so yeah. the, yeah, it's the first. That's how they used to do it. They waited for you to actually drive by and yeah, then they Tupac did it. Yeah, Tupac was killed in a reverse drive by. <laughs> yeah. That's really the truth. <laughs> um, and we're still looking for Michael Collins' killer, but we've <laughs> not Tupac's about. anymore. Not Tupac's. Yeah, yeah. So it might be the same guy, who knows. Um, no, yeah, so in the midst of that, my great-grandfather fled Ireland because he did not want to die. <laughs> um, this so. is the craziest story. Yeah. Like I, because I've known you for a while. I mm-hmm. did. I have no clue. Do you I talk spent, about this on stage? I don't. I spent so much time talking about how I'm half black, but the Irish <laughs> side of my family is so interesting. <laughs> my mom's like, "Why do you never talk about?" It? I'm like, "I don't know how to make war." They made a Liam Neeson movie about Aurel- about Michael Collins. We, we're 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 good. But didn't they also make uh, what, what was it? Two years ago, they made the movie Belfast, which is also about the yeah. Irish Revolution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's no there's no shortage of it out there. I don't need to be. Yeah, but there's no stand up the who's out there yeah. being like. So uh, here's a funny bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys ever hear of a uh, guerrilla warfare? One of my relatives basically invented it. I I'm telling you, and, and listen. I love your all your material about being half black, half white. I think it's amazing. But what a nice compliment to it <laughs> sure. when you're saying like, hey, this is one part of me. You know, yeah. what else is kind of crazy? You probably yeah. didn't know this. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my uh, my family is uh, 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 spilled the blood of many a British person. I don't person. know if I'd lead with that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyone here British? Anyone yeah, British? Yeah, yeah, hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what I did? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, but yeah, no. So like uh, when my mom was a kid, uh, she um, found a doll. Uh, in my in her grandma's house uh, and had all these writings on it she was like what is this doll um and so what it was was the uh the the irish republican army used to transcribe messages in gaelic on like kid dolls and just have kids walk with the doll to wherever whoever they needed to communicate to and give the doll to that person because the british army says oh this is some kid walking around whatever and it would be like coordinates to like this is where this guy that we're gonna kill is gonna be. Meet me there, and we'll and we'll do the job. Okay, this is like, <laughs> how have you not written this into a screenplay? Because I I don't know. <laughs> I I guess I should really I should really get on it. But yeah, I um, in college I did a pretty deep paper on it. Um for for a class that was like it was like a history class where they wanted you to try and like intertwine family history and was like do i have a paper for yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> which side do you want to know about? yeah it's like i can go any direction you want buddy <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah it is it is something that i should uh i should i should i should write about do you think that you studied history because you have such an interesting one that you were like, maybe history in general is as interesting as what I have. I was just good at it. <laughs> you were good at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was, it was my best subject in like, you know, middle school and high school. And then, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I like, I like writing. So that's what most of it is. I'm not the biggest fan of the reading aspect of it, but uh, no. you know, most, a good history class is just, here's the general landscape of what we're talking about, form an opinion about it and write about it. And I'm like, I like having opinions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was about to ask like, what makes one good at history? But I suppose that's the answer. Yeah. It's about, it's about moving past the binary of a question of like, was the, was the American revolution good or bad? And it's, you know, because that's what they kind of teach you in class was like they kind of present two sides of an argument mm. and then it's like pick the side and a good history class and a good history teacher will present information and not tell you to s- tell you, OK, so now what did you think this or this? It's whatever your opinion is about this, go ahead and write about it. Um, and so I was lucky that I had teachers that did that in high school and especially in college. Um because I went to UC Santa Barbara, which is like a research university. Yeah. So it's also like a beautiful university. It, I tell people all the time, it's like if you if you have kids who are like of that age where they're going to start looking at schools, like yeah, if you get into UCLA, obviously like name brand, great. Yeah. Um, but if if you're not going to UCLA, go to Berk. Go not go. Don't go to Berkeley. Actually, I yeah. I, I find that <laughs> Berkeley's just like not a fun town. Um. 
But Santa yeah, Barbara's you, sick. Santa Barbara's amazing. Um, yeah, and like it's not like <laughs> you get to party school and you get fucked up. It's like yes, that's there. Yeah, but yeah. like just you're a stone. You, you can literally throw a football from some of the residence halls to the beach. Uh, it's beautiful. It's a great school, and yeah, there's fun stuff out there if you want it. And you could just go down to downtown Santa Barbara and like shop and stuff. It's yeah, it's an incredible place to go to school well the interesting thing is that you when you you were like yeah if you get into ucla go there not to bring up old wounds but didn't you also go to ucla for a second i was at ucla for a semester for law school yeah one semester one semester i and then you objected no i'm just kidding. Yeah, i had to do it i, I objected do it. i johnny cochran my way out of there yeah, um well that's an impressive feat <laughs> yeah it was uh, not a good decision um would you say like the program didn't fit so you must have quit is that what you'd say <laughs> the program didn't have a yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Am I uh, doing too many of these? I can. No, I, I, are, I need to pull are, back. No, those are good. Um, um, what What was it? So, because here's the thing: the way that I know you uh, is as a comedian who yeah. also, as I mentioned off mic, you and I have a boatload of similar interests. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, obviously really like you. That shouldn't be a surprise to you. Um, but I don't know you as a history buff who wanted to be a lawyer. That is where I lose the the plot right. on you. Uh, well, it's not so much that I was a history buff who wanted to be a lawyer. I was a person who took history classes whose parents wanted him to go to law school. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Uh, Asked yeah. and answered. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did you uh, did you always? The interesting thing about your particular background and upbringing and all these things is like. I feel like it could have pushed you in thousands of different directions. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like having, you know, from what we've even talked about, like, you know, y- your your mother has an incredible history. I've heard a little bit about your father on stage, really interesting history. Mm-hmm. You could have gone every direction. Yeah. Law school seems like a weird, like, we don't know where you should go. Try law school. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was like people were like, what do you want to do with your life? And I'm like, you know, in middle school or high school, whatever. I'm like, I don't. No, I'm shocked uh, in middle school because if I recall correctly, and I'm not trying to tell any of your jokes on on this podcast, you do a funny joke. I think about like be traveling on a basketball team. Yeah, and so I'm like, I, I would have thought middle school if if I were you know remotely good, I would have wanted to just be in the NBA. So I wanted to. I knew that I wasn't going to be good enough to play in the NBA. You knew it like twelve. Well, because I was on all these teams where it was like we were. A lot of my travel teams were like top fifty in the country. And playing Holy crap. top as like the number forty seven school. Once you get to like number twenty five, you're losing by twenty. Oh, it's that bad. You're getting annihilated by kids. You know, by um, the by the the ball. Brothers. Yeah, 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 exactly. So no, so I played when I was living in Pittsburgh. I played in the same AAU system as um, TJ McConnell, um, who, funny enough, wasn't the guy. Nobody thought he was the guy who was going to go pro. There were like three dudes in his grade that people. He was were great, like. and so yeah. So he went to uh, he went to Duquesne, and then he transferred to Arizona and just like worked his ass off. And yeah, he's uh, he's a phenomenal player. Um, and that was the thing is that he had a better he's no he had a better work ethic than everybody, regardless of what people thought about his talent. Everyone was like, yeah, that kid just works his ass off. Were you ever in a one on one position with him? Yeah, yeah, no, we had practices. Um, he, I wouldn't say annihilated me every time, but like smoked your. But it was like a solid, like okay, this guy's like probably, because he should he shouldn't have been at Duquesne. He should have been at Arizona from jump. It's just that Pittsburgh is not like the biggest basketball city. So oh, it isn't. Yeah. I'm shocked. <laughs> well, yeah, no is NBA Pittsburgh team. the biggest anything city? Pittsburgh is the biggest pierogi city. <laughs> well, so wait. So going back to it, so you 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 know at twelve you're not going to go in the NBA. Yeah. So I wanted to be. I wanted to. I wanted to play D one basketball. I was like, I think I'm good enough to do that. That's a great goal. Um. So I'll do. I was like, I'll do that, and like get a degree, and then I guess go to law school after that. Uh, and like maybe be a sports agent or something, you know, kind of. I, I See, that makes sense to yeah, me. Yeah, I didn't have the, I didn't have like the complete vision of it. Um, that entire time, I was obsessed with comedy. Obsessed with. I watched Comedy Central probably four hours a a, a day, from like ages like ten through through high school who was the influence was it mom dad a sibling both of my parents are very funny in their own way okay um 
When your mom's not drinking all that tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah, when my mom is not in the bathroom peeing from all the tea that exactly. she's drinking. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I grew up in a funny household. Okay. People were people were constantly joking and like taking shots at each other and that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was a very like, what, what are you looking at? My dad all the time, like, what are you looking at, you light skinned motherfucker? I'm like, that's your fault. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, you did this. <laughs> you married the white woman. Yeah. Um That is so funny. Yeah. It's like, and it's like, also, my dad is not Hakeem Elijah one. <laughs> like, he's not. I mean, that sounds like a dream. Mm. So few yeah. people are going to get that joke, but the yeah. ones that do are going to really appreciate it. Yeah, um, it'll, it'll shake them up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> love. Uh, wait, okay. So you grew up in a funny household. And so this yeah. whole time, as, even as you're like studying history, you're like, I feel like I could do comedy. Yeah, I had, I had always wanted to do it. And like, you know, you don't really know how to start. And it was always specifically stand up. It was always specifically, I want to do stand-up comedy. Um, Interesting. And yeah, just had like no clue, like, how do people get started with this thing? You know, living in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, you don't hear about, like, yeah, there's a comedy club inside of the city where people, like, go and do it. No. Yeah, you think it's this unattainable thing on TV or in L.A. or New York or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I was, you know, got to college. I started doing stand-up uh, halfway into my freshman year. Um, so te- technically I started 10 years ago. Um, it's interesting. I've not found, cause I've gone to Santa Barbara to do stand up mm-hmm. quite a few times and it's not a huge burgeoning scene up there. No. So there was one guy who had like an operation and you know, he had like six shows a week, uh, going on that were like decently populated. And then on campus we had a club, which is still running, which I think might be, like the largest the at this point the longest running entertainment performance arts club on campus called Laughology um which was we just ran a weekly stand up show and the nice thing about being in Santa Barbara and 2 hours away from LA and with uh, a student board that has more money than they know what to do with we could pay people hey do you want to make like we'll pay you 600 bucks to drive up to LA uh to just do 45 minutes of stand up and you can make a weekend vacation out of that or you can just drive up do it and drive back down and we had so many people so many comics uh like i was doing shows opening for like maz jabrani when i was like four months into stand up that's terrifying <laughs> and like i'm like yeah this is awesome and then you get out into the room like oh this shit is fucking hard to like get to it's like it was such a luxury because it was like also like you know, you're doing stand up for like a hundred stoned college kids. It's like the easiest crowd to kill in front of. And you're still nervous. You're like, I'm gonna botch the crap out of it. I this. was nervous until like the first time I ever did like that show, and it was like, a, you know, it felt like, oh, this is a real show that I'm doing. Uh, the host forgot my name, and then I was like, oh, none of this matters. Nobody else cares. Why should I? <laughs> Why should I mean, I? that's Why honestly should... though. Honestly, yeah. it's funny because off mic, you and I were talking about San Diego, and. Uh, mm-hmm. I the worst time I've ever been introed was in San Diego, mm-hmm. where the host gets up and she goes, "She's like, I love this next comic. He is one of my favorite comics in the world. I always look forward when he comes down." Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for, um, oh, oh gosh, I'm forgetting his name. It's uh, Jason. Oh no! And I'm just like. You just invalidated everything. He said. <laughs> yeah, this guy is great. He's a great friend. Yeah, I look forward to him every time. Now, what is his name again? Yeah. I have a copy of his birth certificate <laughs> yeah. in my car. Oh, what was? <laughs> I know his. So I know his social security number is one two nine. Um, but I don't. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't remember his own name. name. That's yeah. Bad intros, man. They either set you up really well or they set you up horribly. Because you can riff on a bad intro. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can, but sometimes it's so bad where you're just like. Oh, how did we get here? Yeah, it's like you, you literally should have just said, fuck this guy, Matt Duckett. <laughs> that would be better than, oh, um, yeah, so uh, this guy, I think he said uh, he's yeah. from, yeah. But yeah, so it started when I was in college, and then in my, uh, I was originally going to go to University of San Diego for law school. Um, they gave me a fat scholarship, um, and I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to do this, but if I'm basically going for free, then I'll like suffer through it. Suffer uh, through San Diego with great tacos. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my God, what a terrible and place. Beaches, yeah. Um, funny enough, during orientation, uh, because like you know, on my personal essay, I said like I did stand up. Um, they made me do stand up in front of the entire class. I'm sorry, how big is that class there? Uh, I want to say it was probably. I think 
maybe 150 people. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. out. So they had me do it. Not only did they have me do it in front of everybody, they had me do it the last day of orientation right before we took uh, a practice exam. Because it was all like, this is what law school like looks like. And so the last day was like, this is what a law school exam is going to look like when you take it at the end of the semester. And so, yeah, they were like, so we got some, they, they told me about this beforehand. It's not like it I like went up cold. They're like, <laughs> okay. Hey, they're like, Hey, do you want to do some stand up for the, the, the thing tomorrow? And I was like, sure. Tomorrow. So it was only one day. Yeah, yeah. It was only one day. So it was like, can you do like five minutes before the test? So that everyone's like not nervous about this imaginary. Test? You're like, well, what about me? I have to take this. Yeah, imaginary yeah, test. Exactly. I'm like, I'm also taking the test. Uh, can I get like a, the, the first four answers? If yeah, I do, can I get know? some extra credit here? Yeah, like, yeah. what am I Jesus doing? Christ. Um, but I did do it. And like, like horn to I fucking crushed. <laughs> I Are you serious? I crushed so hard to the point that when I went to my advisor uh at the start of the next semester to tell her I'm dropping out. She went, "Yeah, you're really funny." <laughs> she was like, "You're she was like, "You're good at this." And, and you looked at her you go, yeah. "Sustained." <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No objections here. Um, motion, motion to dismiss Matt from law school. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Summary judgment. I'm yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to tell you this is actually completely a legal puns podcast. Yeah, um, that's yeah, all we do. Welcome. Yeah. We, we bring people that have a little bit of legal history. And we just <laughs> dive in. Yeah. If you um, want, if you want a, a B plus knowledge of torts, I've got you covered. But yeah, that's so nuts. So you, you went in, you're like, I'm out, and she, was she just like, you're, yeah, you're funny. You should. Yeah, she, yeah. The, I, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting her name, but uh, it's not Tim and Cindy. I yeah, know it's that not, not Tim and Cindy, uh, nor Dwayne or Christine. Uh, no, um, are those your parents? <laughs> those are my okay, parents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, did we talk about a Dwayne and Christine? <laughs> you know. Christine, great taste in tea. But yeah. anyway, so you don't. But you go in, and she's just like, yeah. Did your parents also go? Yeah, it's fine. So um, my mom was like, you know, yeah, like do your thing, dog. Uh, my dad wasn't happy about it. Good for me. My parents. Got a divorce right as that was happening, so they, <laughs> they were got focused, preoccupied. Yeah, they were focused on other things. Mm. They had their own court cases happening. Yeah, <laughs> your dad was like, violence. Matt, I'm like, I would really love for you to reconsider. And you're like, Oh, yeah. well, how about you reconsider your marriage? He's like, <laughs> yeah, What? Yeah. I gotta go back. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, once I got a job and like, Oh, you can sustain yourself, or like, you know, it's like, yeah. what, what, what are your parents gonna say, really? But yeah, my dad was not psyched about it, uh, when I first dropped out. Here's a question, and and by the way, if this gets too personal, we do not have to go here at all. So when when parents get divorced, whether you're old or young, it becomes yeah. part of your story. So yes. and as a stand up, you want to be able to tell things about your story. Is, oh yeah. Is that a topic though, where you have to or you feel obligated? Not that you have to, but that you feel obligated to go back to your parents. And be like, I'm going to start talking about this on stage, and you're like, that's what it is. No, I I, I talk about it on stage. I have not i don't clear anything with them you know there's like certain parts where i'm like yeah i'm not gonna like talk about like my parents like personal lives no i mean don't go in like, there and be like so they got into a fight once about yeah, like, yeah, don't yeah, do exactly. that yeah no but i talk yeah i talk about it I, I you know from the vantage point of like you know what it's like when you're an adult and your parents divorce it's just so different yeah it's completely different it's way too personal it's a war of attrition really because i, I feel like when you're a kid it's like you know your parents still want you to like love them yeah uh for as an adult they do not care what you think about them as long as you just hate the other one more <laughs> so it's just like yeah i might have done this but you're hey you need to know what you're like uh yeah that is so funny i have a um i have a friend who will go unnamed and um uh when we were growing up his parents were both very accomplished and in, mm. in their fields and very busy people and um you know uh I was over there all the time, but they were so busy that they weren't often there. And to make a long story short, we graduated high school. I'm sure that I'm exaggerating this timeline, but I think it was within like a month mm -hmm. of us graduating high school that they told my friend we're getting a divorce. And, yeah. and my, my friend who is incredibly smart, Mm -hmm. was like, mm -hmm. I'm guessing this didn't just start in the past <laughs> yeah, month. Yeah. And it turns out that they were like, no, we decided this years ago, but we were going to wait until you yeah, graduated until high school. Leave. Yeah. And I was like, that, I don't know that I would be capable of that. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of commitment. And like for my parents, it wasn't like, oh, we're holding on until like the kids like graduate high school or college and have their lives together. It's kind of the opposite. We left, uh, like I left and they're like, Shit, that was kind of our glue guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was the Corey McGetty yeah, of this household. Yeah, exactly. and we just don't have him. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, that was basically the, this guy was the Brian Cardinal, just doing all the dirty work that no one wanted to also do. Also, a great reference. 
That is so crazy. I, I also don't even remember how I learned that you like basketball, but I know that that was a very quick... Well, because it's, I talk about it so much on stage. You know what's interesting? I have heard you talk more about baseball on stage than you've talked about basketball. I mean, those are my two. Right? I don't I don't watch baseball, so no, all those jokes go right over my head. Well, if they go over my people's head, honestly. I don't interrupt our conversation, but I want to no. get to our first segment. Yeah, are you absolutely. ready for the Newly Friend game? Yes, let's do it. So this is like the newlywed game, but mm-hmm. we're friends. Unless you know, I haven't checked every state, but I don't think we're married. Um, don't I, go to Alaska. Okay, got it. Nope, that makes sense. And you, I'm going to be honest. That's the one state I didn't check. So that's on me. <laughs> that's me. Um, so uh, I ask you a question. You write down your answer. I'm going to write down what I think it is, and we're going to see if they match. And then similarly, we will do a question for me. Now, you, there are like 80 topics I could touch on with you because I feel like we have boatloads of similar interests. Yes. But I have to go with the topic, which you are one of the only people I can talk to about, okay. which is sneakers. Sweet. So my Love question it. for you is going to be, and don't tell me your answer, write it down. Okay. What is your favorite sneaker silhouette across brands, mm-hmm. across lines? What is your favorite silhouette? Favorite brand, favorite silhouette all time. Yes. Now, don't tell me. Write it down. Oh, man, that's tough. Okay. Sorry. I'm like a terrible handwriter, so I'm going <laughs> to erase this and do it one more time. I was going to okay. say, what is going on over there? Yeah. No. See, I'd actually, um, like, I know how to hold a pen properly, but I don't. I do like a five-fingered weird. You know what? Someone I went to school with used to do that. Someone else I went to school with used to hold it like this. Yeah. I, it's, I'm left-handed. Um, I'm so sorry. That's, that's <laughs> Yeah, if I was born 40 years earlier, I would, I, biracial and left-handed, I would have been thrown in a cell. <laughs> we haven't even touched on anything about, about being biracial. We'll jump into that soon. Fantastic. Um, yeah, okay. aren't you excited? Yes. Uh, all right, flip your board on three. One, two, three, three. Flip. Oh, no, I wasn't even close. That So the Jordan one. That's what I wrote, Jordan one. If we're going greatest of all time, I would put that and then very close behind it would have been the Air Force One. The LeBron 7 is my favorite sneaker of all time because it's the sneaker I played in in high school. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That's yeah. a really good answer. Was I I also put down as a parenthesis, no, no credit given on the Jordan 11. Is that up there for you? That would be number three. Yeah, because you, you, you've seen you've seen me in in the bread elevens a bunch. Sure, but I also think about like with you. I don't think I've seen you wear threes, but I think I've seen you wear fives and maybe yes. fours. I have I have fives. I have fours. Yeah. Um. What was the other one you said? Uh, well, I had the elevens. Oh, three. Down. So I got the three. Uh, you said threes. I got my first. I got white cement threes when they came out this year. Sure. That was my first pair of threes. Very uncomfortable shoe. <laughs> um, you think a three is uncomfortable? Yeah, I don't like. I I just don't think there's enough in the sole. I like a, I like a little bit of padding and see people think fours are really uncomfortable, but I have really narrow feet, so my pinky toe doesn't hit the outside of the toe box like it does for other people. So you actually work well with the Jordan One, which is incredibly narrow. Yeah, yeah. So narrow the narrower the shoe, the better it is for me. It's like because like I have to go like a half size or full size down for a lot of New Balances because them's them boys uh, wide. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, <laughs> we'll do the same question for me. Okay, sweet. What is my favorite silhouette? Because I'm I am also between. Mm-hmm. A couple. Shaq Gnosis. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. The foam posits are my favorite. Um, I don't think I have it, but I'm gonna. I'm just. I'm just gonna go with this. I think this is right. Okay, ready? Flip your board on three. Yes, one, one, two, two three. three. Oh, uh, that was that was gonna be the second. Okay. That was that was like my third guess. Was the was the. Yeah. So Matt put the Air Max one. Um, yeah. I put the SB Low is yeah. my favorite. Because that's that's what I was saying. Was like I see you in SB Lows all the time. I know. But I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. Um, yeah. I should have just went with what I see you mm. in. I overthought it. No. Well, so I also put the three that I put at the bottom are Continental Eighties, mm-hmm. which I love. That's that's an Adidas yeah. uh, silhouette. Uh, the New Balance Nine Ninety Ones. Um, and just shell toes. Yeah. Um, I think shell toes are yeah. an iconic sneaker. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to beat a shell toe. Um, yeah. And that's what I like about, I think, and this is where our sneaker fandom intersects too, is yeah, that yeah. we, we kind of go across the board. Like I'm, I'm in a pair of Saucony shadow 5000s right now. I loved them as soon as you walked in the door. Yeah. These was, are the, uh, the St. Barth's. Um, yeah. They're, they're a phenomenal sneaker. Awesome shoe. Love taking these on, uh, like tropical vacations oh yeah you know it just fits it just fits the vibe right um but yeah you you have a diversity of of sneaker fandoms you're not like a nike loyalist or or or, or what have you um i do think i own the most I, I, everybody does just because it's by virtue and then you know the umbrella of like okay well technically jordan jordan's part of the nike brand so that also 
can yeah. add to the number. But yeah, most pe- we all own mostly Nikes, you know. I will say that my favorite sneaker of the past five years was my Donald Glover Adidas Continental 80 collab. Cool. Yeah, that's a great shoe. You cannot find that shoe no. anywhere on the internet. No, 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 no. Not at all. Yeah, I mean, I remember my dad had like, you know, if there was a, if there was a Jordan 3 or an 11, my dad had it. Was he a big sneaker up. guy? Big sneaker guy. And so that's where so that's, it got that's, passed yeah, down. That's, that where, that's where it came from. My dad's a big sneaker guy. He's a big, like, just like menswear, like shoes guy. Sure. So, yeah, that's where I get, that's where I get the sneaker fandom. Is from, there like, sure. because like I'm, I'm learning more about your parents where your dad, and all due respect to your mom, your dad sounds like someone I would roll with, but like your mom sounds cool too. She likes tape, <laughs> but like, you know, your dad is a no bullshit sneaker head. Like I'm in. Um, yeah. But, but is there, is there a battle almost like, not like a battle for your soul, but kind of like two completely different, like oh, I don't yeah. know your parents very well, but like it seems like two completely different cultures. Yeah, it's two people who should have never been married. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You, yeah, you didn't say I, it. I, I want to be clear. Uh, listen. Because it's, uh, yeah. Like what? what is that experience like when you have these two very different cultures? Yeah, it's 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 a crazy, it's a crazy pull. Um, and it, yeah, it manifested itself in like, interesting ways so like because i grew up i grew up in the suburbs yeah um most of the time the only the only black people that were like around on a regular basis were my brother and my dad uh in the community but my dad has my dad always had like a, my dad had a lot of other like black men who just like didn't live in our neighborhood sure that would like come around and be around so like i grew up i grew up around a lot of I grew up in black culture as much as one can, uh, in the environments that I grew up in. And then when I moved, uh, when I got, when I moved back to the Bay area in high school and you know, it's just a diverse place in general was like, okay, like this makes a lot more sense for me. Um, as opposed to like the outskirts of Pittsburgh or whatever. Um, but yeah, so I had that influence and like my dad driving us into the city to get our hair cut and stuff like that oh because he didn't want any of those suburban yeah yeah haircuts. didn't want these karens touching uh touching her hair and then my brother got the corbin blue hair in middle school and i was like well the white people have to touch his hair because they know how to do this the best i mean um, i know exactly what hair yeah, yeah, yeah. i cannot imagine your dad was thrilled with that no um oh my god there was one time my brother and my dad got in a huge fight because my brother straightened his hair because he wanted to see what it would look like. Well, if you just wanted to see what it looked like, I actually don't have any beef with that. And it turned into like a whole thing of like you're trying to like erase your black. It was it was bad. Um, see, that's a kind of conversation where I would be, if I am, the, you know, the kid of 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 two two different race parents. Like mm-hmm. I, I, it's a lot for a kid to shoulder to have one of their parents be like, "You're trying to erase your culture." Yeah, like yeah. I just want to see what my hair was going to look like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was. So th- that's the pull of it, right? Um, and then like, you know, my, my dad's family yeah, yeah. wasn't around a lot. My dad, Are they not from that a, area? They, they just not, it's just a healthy barrier put <laughs> between it. them for, for one reason or another. Um, on the flip side, uh, growing up, I was around, uh, I was around my mom's extended family all the time until I was probably like seven or eight. And then it was just like a particular set of cousins, but those cousins were around four times a year we were getting together and stuff you that's know? a lot so yeah i had like this very uh you know irish american east coast influence around Hell all yeah. the time um so yeah you kind of you, so you have the internal pull inside of the house but i think what forms the identity is what happens outside of it and when you grow up in the suburbs it's oh your dad's black Sorry, buddy, you're black, and we don't like you. Uh, that was, that's what it was. Didn't was that actually the vibe? Oh, a hundred percent, dude. It was like I literally got told on the playground my like second week of school in in Washington State, you can't come play with us because you're black. And it was like the kids were like, we don't like you because you're black, and then they were like, our parents don't want you around. Like you can't come over because you're black. This is in like 2004. How old are you at this point? 10, 11. How does it... I, I, I Maybe I might be wrong. I don't know that a 10 or 11 year old can even understand... Like if I'm 10 or 11 and someone says to me, I go, I'd be thinking like, but why, does not, why, do, why do you not want to play with me? 
well, luckily it was something that my dad prepared us for because, you know, he saw the environment that we were kind of bringing us up and he's like, Hey, so, you know, there's this thing called racism and it kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> I hope he said it like a slide up. Listen, there's thing about racism. Uh, the kids got to just like dropping us off at school for say, by the way, you're black and people aren't going to like that. Have a good day. <laughs> kids are racist. I pack your lunch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a good one. What does that mean? You'll find out. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. In about 20 minutes. Um, yeah. So we had the knowledge of it and like it had come out in other ways when I was younger. Um, not as aggressive as that Mm. um but yeah you just you kind of you just get treated differently and like you know uh uh, the lighting uh, i'm sure isn't doing me any favors people like who is this fucking white man proclaiming (laughs) i didn't know i didn't know what you meant i was like i think it's good lighting people are like why is rachel dolezal's brother (laughs) on josh's podcast right now (laughs) but like you know as a kid as a, kid, as a kid, it was, you know, I, I grew out the hair hoping it made me look blacker. Now I just look like a piece of broccoli when I wear green. <laughs> uh, but I, I. Oh my um, God, you're killing me. Yeah, okay. I, 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 lo- I looked much, I looked much more biracial when I was younger. Interesting. Um, Is that something that as you got older, you, 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 that was a disappointment that you're, you started to, I guess. In <laughs> no, your, I'm white. <laughs> yeah. Listen, no. I had, we had Chip Nicholson on here who goes, listen, white people don't have culture. And I was like, second it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um. So it was very interesting growing into an adult and like kind of being my own person outside of my family. Right. Mm. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I, I looked a lot more, uh, I looked a lot more mixed growing up. I was around my dad, my yeah. dad, you know, coached our basketball teams and stuff like, so it's like, even if people, even if people didn't me clock it, it's like, they see him, you know, treating me like my, like my, his son. So like, Oh, that's that guy's kid. Yeah. Um, so as I got older and was kind of just on my own, uh, yeah, it was in, it kind of became interesting because th- growing up there was an overemphasis, there was an overt emphasis on the fact that I'm half black. Okay, it's like you're a black per- from uh, from my dad and my mom, despite like you know obviously being very Irish and being very proud of that and wanting us to remember that, was always like, yeah, no, you're black. Like that's what people are going to first and foremost uh, see and like you know. Uh, potentially uh, treat you uh, uh, in a certain way because of. Um, so it was very interesting having that from both my family and like my outside influences experiences being yeah. seen as a black person. And then I become an adult and it kind of becomes the opposite where people are like, you're not black because of the way you look. People don't uh, say you don't look black. People say you're not black. people. People. I have people uh, not as much in person. But online, on like social media and of, stuff. Of course, I should have guessed that. Yeah, but on the flip side, it's nice because I do get a lot of other mixed race people being like, "Thank you for like owning for like uh, uh, owning that like the black part of you and being proud yeah. of it." Yeah, because you know, and that's the interesting thing is that like I feel like younger people have this thing of like if you don't if you don't match like what I have in my head of like what other black people look like, you don't count to me. Um, it's a lot. Cause it's all, it's all younger people saying this to me. Anybody who is like my age or older, uh, one drop rule, baby, we're all in this together. <laughs> like <laughs> whether we like it or not, we're all, we're all hunkered down, you know? Oh my God. Um, so that's kind of the struggle, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a push and a pull and it's interesting, but like, I always, you know, I don't really say like, in my day to day, I don't go. I am biracial. I say I'm half black. Like that's which is kinda... it's interesting that people feel the. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say need the. Uh, uh, they feel they have the authority to tell you right. What well, you because are. people have their experiences and they go, well, because you look a certain way. Like there's no way you could have the same experiences as me. And to that, I say, you're right to an extent. Mm. Like obviously, like I'm not walking around. Uh, in like white spaces or like driving my car with a cop car behind me like completely freaking out like sure i could get yeeted uh <laughs> uh unless uh, <laughs> unless i show hey cop here's a picture of my dad yeah, um, yeah. well that's but, what i do every time I get yeah, yeah. Yeah. but that being said that doesn't invalidate the experiences that i have had not and at that's, all and that's and that's what i t- and that's what i try to explain to people and some people are like amicable and willing to listen about that sort of thing and again, this is just like online dumb shit. In person, I've never had somebody 
come up to me in person and be like, you're not black. Why would you, unless it's like plenty of times white comics have like gone on stage after me, like if he's black, I'm black. And it's like good, good one, buddy. <laughs> um, I'm guessing I, I know a very specific comedy club where I'm guessing that's happened a bunch. Um, but I, I, I guess my, the, the other side of things and mm-hmm. I, and maybe and the answer may be like, definitely not because you maybe are not the image of what someone has as a mixed race person. Have you accidentally had a front row seat for some crazy racist oh, shit? Oh, you bet your sweet ass. Um, <laughs> I don't want to bet my sweet ass. <laughs> you're, well, you're cashing I'm in right now, it baby. Here. So the one that always comes to mind with that was um, I was at a I was at a basketball camp, um, and it was for universe. It was like a University of Pittsburgh thing that they put on for like the middle school. Oh, this was like a like a really good. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. Um, it, very funnily. Um, so they had like you know they broke us all out into teams and like we all played each other and then there was like a little playoff tournament for the top four teams uh my team comes in second then there were four or there were three individual like challenges one of them was like like shooting around the basket it was like an nba all-star yeah it was like yeah it was like an nba all-star weekend this is awesome i came in second in every single thing are you serious i didn't yeah i would rather come in like six than one and one in the other and the counts the counselors were all pit basketball players so it was like sam young uh and like dewan blair and those got aaron gray um but so at this camp we were going my team was going to play this other team and the team i was on other than me was all white kids and the other team was mostly black kids. So you were going to lose. And so we <laughs> did, in fact, lose. Yep. Um, but one kid came up to me and was like, hey, let's go show those N-words who's boss. No. Uh-uh. How old? Wait, what age is this? <laughs> 12. I'm, oh, my God. People don't realize, dude, it's like. Pits like you got Philly where there's no such thing as race because people don't see color because they only see red because they're mad all the time. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know where you were going with that. I was yeah, like, yeah, huh? yeah. okay. No, everyone's just so angry that racism is just. Uh, it's like, yeah, of course we're racist. We're mad. Um, yeah, they all sound like Bill Burr over yeah. there. Yeah. So people love to say um, Pennsylvania is Pittsburgh, um, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Alabama in between. It's more like you have Philadelphia over here, and the rest of it is all lives matter. Oh my god! Um, oh yeah. my, is is that is I, so? I P- have Pittsburgh not... votes Democratic, like the city itself, but, but it's every single person like, outside you, of you, that you, core. Yeah. You get outside of the city limits, and it gets and it gets wild, man. So yeah, um, so like yeah, I got in like uh. It wasn't like a full blown fist fight, but like I shoved the kid, and then like you know, one, someone, one of the counselors, like grabbed me and was like, "What's going on?" I'm like, "He said the n word," and they're and they're like, "Oh," because they, you know, the people who know know. Sam Young knew I was black. Yeah. Uh, my my nickname was Tayshon Prince during the <laughs> camp. <laughs> when I was a kid, I looked pretty much exactly. Uh, I looked I looked like a cross between Tayshon Prince and Channing Fry. Uh, I uh, I gotta say, so I, I this makes me so sad for anyone who's listening and doesn't know what Tayshon Prince looks like. You really gotta go look it up yeah, because yeah. like. I get it. You don't really yeah. look like Deja Prince anymore. Not but now like, anymore, but yeah, it was a very, it was, it was a very specific looking dude. Also an elite uh, defender, but yeah, go yeah, ahead. Incredible. Yeah, so yeah, so so that's just one of the many examples. There of are like many. Just being, yeah, oh yeah, I mean, just people saying some outlandish shit. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I remember went to like an open mic uh, and someone like was like trying stand up for the first time that like I had like, he was like, oh, you, like, I want to do lifeology. He's like, oh, that's great, man. Like, da, da, da. And I guess he just didn't, at that point, I really wasn't talking about being biracial because sure. I was so new to it. And yeah. And he just told like one of the most heinous racist joke, just like it was something extremely racist. I can't really re- recall it now. And I don't I was think like, any of us are really missing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it's like, and I was like, dude, like that, I, I just like said like, God, like that's fucked up. Like, I, I just, like, don't appreciate that shit. He's like, why do you care? And it's like, because I'm black, asshole. But but that, but that what drives me crazy about that interaction is, like, you don't have to be black to not yeah, want to hear like, this guy spew and that's racist what makes, shit. And yeah, and that's what makes it annoying, too, right? Is, like, someone says something racist, and then it's like, it's, we're all just going to wait for me to pop off on this guy? Yeah, it's not your... That's the interesting thing, and I think... Not to get too heady, but like you know, going back to what what you know, uh, uh, everything that happened in twenty twenty with George Floyd, and uh, you know, and all of that. Like, sorry, who? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Um, I'll, let me let me let me white explain it to you. Um, but I but it's it's interesting that like that in, until twenty twenty, it was like the everyone just was fine with the idea that the onus 
of standing up against that. Well, let's just find the one black person in the room yeah, yeah. to do no, this. Exactly, right? Yeah, it's like... It's ridiculous. No, I mean, and on that front, sitting in a uh, uh, history class and having to like explain the civil rights movement to kids in like fourth grade, because the teacher's like, hey, Matt, you can talk about this. And it's like, no, they, the teacher did not do that. <laughs> Literally, there was one time it was like, Matt, you, the, kid, the teacher's like, Matt, do you want to take this one over for a little bit? And I'm like, no. Like, yeah, I know who Martin Luther King is, but like, I haven't read the biography of Malcolm X yet, buddy. Like, yeah, wait. Which, which I've heard is a page turner. Yeah, yeah wait, wait until wait, wait until I'm 18. Jesus Christ. I can't imagine. Yeah, fourth grade teacher being like, so uh, Matt yeah. knew Rosa Parks. Oh, Matt? Yeah, yeah, exactly. In your family. This is a great one. Um, So I remember one, uh, in, this was kindergarten. Uh, my dad comes to pick me up from school. Um, it's around the holidays. And the teacher is like, oh, uh, Mr. Duckett, um, could you and Matt bring in a zucchini bread next week? Zucchini. And my dad was like, why do you need us to bring in zucchini bread? And they're like, for the holiday party. And my dad was like, my dad thought it was like a white thing. He was like, well, what, what is it? Yeah, he was like, what zucchini? What, like, what, what is that like a Polish thing? I don't know. Like, where's zucchini? And she's like, oh, because we needed something for the Kwanzaa part. Are you kidding me? First off, there are so many questions I have based on that, but the biggest one is, I don't even think I've had zucchini bread. What the hell is it? And why, why is it associated with Kwanzaa? Since then, I've had zucchini bread. Is it good? It's decent. What? what, what, what it's is not it? a lot, because you know, zucchini is like mostly water, so like you get like a small accent of it, but it's not like, yeah. Okay. But it, why is like, that? Just, just make regular bread. So I think, I, I don't, I can't verify if it's actually part of Kwanzaa. <laughs> I think this woman was just like throwing yeah, things yeah, yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah. The concept of Kwanzaa is related to harvest. And I do think I do think that zucchinis grow naturally in certain parts of Africa. I hope that your dad Here's the challenge with this. What oh, was... the exact words that my dad said was nobody in this damn house celebrates Kwanzaa. <laughs> We'll Your bring dad you, is a legend. Yeah, he was. When are like, we having him on the podcast? Yeah, get to what you got to get. Dude, Dwayne, my dad, my dad should have been a comic. He has so many great stories, and he's such a funny guy. He's he's been arrested on suspicion of terrorism before. Oh, that's a great story. <laughs> um, How are you? We're coming to the end of this episode, and you drop gingerly that your dad was arrested on suspicion of terrorism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in uh, in in Rome in the eighties. What is happening right now? This is the weirdest <laughs> episode we've had in so long. The number of Dude, things you've dropped into this conversation. There's some cra- yeah, there's so much. I haven't even gotten into finding out that I had a half sister when I was uh, when I was 22. When uh, you were 22? Yeah, that is very late in the game. Yeah, that I came out uh, uh, law school dropout, divorce time. I had a fucking triple threat, baby. Did it come out? And I swear, I, I know we don't have time. To get it. I'm like dying to know this. I just have to ask: Was it one of those things? Because I have mm-hmm. two different friends that had mm-hmm. this. One of those things where they do these like 23 and Me things or stuff like that, and it, crazy shit. Pops it was up. not that. So I had very vague memories of my sister, yeah. living with us when I was like really little. Um, and then I like my mom told me like I'm divorcing your father, like leave me. And I was like, yeah, I totally support that. Also, I'm dropping out of school. Yeah. Um, You're like, I support that cloud cover because yeah, yeah, here's yeah. what's really yeah, going on. Here's, here's yeah. the real deal. And I was like, hey, by the way, uh, I have this vague memory of like a 13, 14-year-old girl living with us when I was like four or five. Who was that? And my mom just immediately breaks down in tears, hysterically crying. And I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> sister. Uh, you just <laughs> randomly, it crossed your mind in that moment, and you're like, this is as good a time as I any. had been. I had thought about it, and the person I was dating at the time was like, there was someone who lived in your house, and you, didn't, you don't know who they were. You should ask your parents about that. I was like, yeah, I'll get to it. How old? You said you have a brother, right? Yeah, so I have a brother who's a year older. Okay, so did you go to him and be like, because I would have gone to my sister. He, and didn't, he didn't really remember. What? Which and is he weird. he was older. Yeah, he didn't really remember. Um, and, but yeah, so. He was gaslighting you, dude. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> he, he, oh God, he knew the whole that. time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so, I, yeah, my mom was like, okay. So my mom was like, I was married before your father. Yeah. I had, I, and I had a kid who's your sister, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Um, yeah. Hello. Um, Welcome to the pod, Teresa. Welcome to the pod, Teresa. Um, but yeah, so yeah, some family stuff happened. And she ended up not living with us. Sure. Um, and yeah, my like parents just like didn't tell me about her. Um, you, it is crazy to me. Listen, I don't know how to parent, so I'm not going to pass judgment. Neither do my, neither do my parents. Oh, yeah, right. I, I was going to say, listen, my parents really were just throwing darts at a board. Yeah, really, um, the only thing they got right is like, be proud of your heritage, <laughs> that which was, is a good one. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. Yeah, I, I, my parents were like, hey, uh, don't give up. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I was like, yeah. honestly, given that I do in comedy, you probably should have encouraged the opposite. Yeah, but, yeah. um, 
I I find it interesting that 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 your parents were like, well, maybe how long can we keep this ruse? Going? Yeah, yeah, because they're like they probably don't fucking yeah. They're, 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 these kids are like f- four. They're stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, most four year olds are not necessarily it's like, the it's sharpest. Like, it's like these dumbasses can barely work Donkey Kong Country. They're not going to remember family. Yeah, that was an incredibly hard game, and when you think you won and you get to the end, it's a there's a whole other boss King to be. King rule comes out and fucks your shit. Up. True, oh, it's true. Great game. Yeah, me and my sister's play. Speaking of sisters, um. Liz, I want to hear all about that, but I know we're running yeah. up on time. Are you ready for the lightning round? Yes, let's do it. So the lightning round is five fast questions. They do not have to be fast answers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I put them on an index card because mm-hmm. it's my only opportunity to be a late night talk show host. Okay. We've got question one, black from the waist down, white from the credit score up. Uh- uh- <laughs> <laughs> I've laughed harder on this episode than I have in a lot. That is an incredible joke. Question one: What is a favorite ritual of yours? So, like, mine is brewing tea. Um, this one is like uh, kind of a weirdly specific thing. We love it. That's what but we're here for. When I would, I used to drive home f- to the Bay Area from UC Santa Barbara, sure, uh, for college for vacations. Every time I would listen to. Um, or listen to Zuropa, which is uh, a U2 album from 1993. That's What's interesting is I know you love U2. Yes. And I don't know that everyone knows that about you, but I know that I'm about going you. to the Sphere this Saturday. Oh, of course you are. Yep. Um, With my mommy. I guess <laughs> which one's white. Uh <laughs> um, Question two. What is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh? So something that I, something I was just thinking about, uh, actually, uh, the other day. Um, so my brother and I, for some reason... Whenever we're watching football and someone drops a pass, we do the Swedish chef from the Muppets. Because, you know, he's like tossing the knives. So sometimes oh. the guy's like joining. So like a guy would drop a ball and we go, hootie birds. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's yeah, a great that's, one. That's a good one. Um, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my girlfriend and I have a thousand. Some of them are so batshit insane. I'm like, I can't say that. On, I was on gonna say, I mean, you could say anything you want, but she might want you to yeah, keep yeah, it on yeah, the closer exactly. side. Here, um, yeah. A recurring bit that we do have is, um, I don't know where it came from, but like one time she was doing something, and I just very like sarcastically, like as an old man, just went sometime today, <laughs> and so we do that to each other sure. all the time when someone is uh, is taking a minute. Um, that's a fun one. Those, those are those are two. There's like I said, a thousand, and I'm kind of brain freezing because I'm like, I know there's something that Grace is going to be like. Why didn't she say that obvious one that we do all the time? And I'm like, hey, it's a lightning round. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a lightning round. <laughs> yeah. Question three: What is your most controversial take? My most controversial take: uh, Everyone should have been thankful that they got that U2 album on their phone. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. If that's what you want to run with, we'll take that. The first half is overproduced. The second half of that album is really great. The hot take, the true hot take, yeah. is that U2 is objective, not objectively because it's a take. In my opinion, U2 is the second greatest rock and roll band of all time behind the Beatles. That's, that is, and I'm, th- my response is not arguing your take because mm-hmm. um, I have not given that enough thought, but right. that is definitely a take. 1987 to 2011, they were the biggest rock band on planet Earth. Yes, Nirvana was around. Yes, sure. there. Yes, Coldplay had their moments, but no other band has been in the con- at the very least in the conversation of we're the best band on the planet for that long. Awards are made up, but they do have the most Grammys out of any rock band. Okay. Uh, at the time uh, when it ended in 2011, they had the highest grossing tour of all time uh, with the 360 tour, which was 2009 through 2011. Um, and yeah, I would, I, I, I mean, you know, for people that are like, just know you two from the phone thing or just like Bono as he is now, uh, go listen to, go listen to the, to the mid eighties albums, listen to war, listen to the unforgettable fire, um, mind blowing, uh, incredible lyricism. And if you want to talk about, talk about influence, I mean, Coldplay, Muse, the killers, all 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 derivative all ext- um arcade fire all extremely derivative of u2 and the biggest and in their generation the biggest rock bands uh i mean apparently mr brightside was about bono himself <laughs> that's, that's what they say I'm but yeah kidding. that's 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 my hot take. okay i love that i love that um question you two number two you t- <laughs> question four have you ever experienced imposter syndrome and if so is there one moment that really sticks out for you 
I mean, I'll I'll I'll, I'll say I'll say like this past weekend because like I had I just like wasn't really getting booked on a lot of stuff up here mm. for uh for for this past month, and so I was like, okay, you're gonna go down to San Diego and do a feature set. Um, it's I'm like, am I a feature? <laughs> I was like I was like uh, it's like oh well, I can't like I'm fighting for my life to get like a seven minute set up here. Like uh, maybe I'm not as as good as this as I thought I, as I thought I am. Um. And you know, it, and you know, this past weekend went great. I had I had an awesome time, and the set was really good. And it's something that I'm looking forward to sending out places to do it more. Um, you know, definitely playing it, it, in travel basketball. There was like, what the, I'm like, I'm not as good as these people. Um, but sometimes it's like, you know, when you're part of a team, it's easier because it's like, all right, well, maybe I'm not as good at this guy, but I know that I am like the best three point shooter on this court. So sure, I'm gonna you know shoot the lights out or whatever so yeah it's just like i don't know how you like eliminate imposter syndrome but i think i think for me whenever i have feelings of anxiety or whatever imposter syndrome it's just this is just me really giving a shit about this which i think is the, i just care the right way yeah i just care a bunch so okay what i care about this so i need to try really hard i love that that's a yeah. phenomenal framing of that yeah uh, my final question for you mm-hmm. is, uh, what is your favorite tea? And if you don't necessarily have a favorite tea, what is your favorite comfort? Yeah, I can't. I can't really say like a favorite tea. I mean, like you know, growing up, whenever I was sick, it was it was it was like a a, a, a Bailey's black tea or whatever, because um, that's what my mom uh, loved. Sure. Um, my favorite comfort. Um, listen, me and Joe Biden don't have a lot in common. <laughs> Oh, but no. if there's something that I agree with him is that ice cream is the undisputed goat dessert. Okay, so you and I are right on the level here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Matt, that's the pot. How do you feel, man? Oh, man, this is a pleasure, man. It's uh, great seeing you because it, it has been too, too long. long. Way too long. Um, lovely home, lovely tea. Stop. I keep lovely going. questions. We love, it. We love yeah. it. No, it's been um, a blast. This is a great couch, too. I'm very jealous. <laughs> Listeners, you heard it from Matt. He loves the couch. Um, Thank you for coming, man. You're welcome anytime. Hey, thank you for having me. That was Matt Duckett. You can find him on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at mduckettcomedy. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. I don't do it as much anymore, Mm. but uh, I really do like making myself an old-fashioned at night. Do you like actually like muddle the sugar cubes really get in the mix there? I'm not much of a sugar muddler these days. Yeah, sugar muddler. I didn't want to tell you. This. We've all been saying that behind <laughs> yeah, your yeah. back. Like, um, oh, Matt, he muddles the sugar. <laughs>